there is a rule in software design called preferred composition over inheritance. In this video, I'm going to explain this rule with an actual example and show you one flow by the Java API by violating this principle. Hello, my good friends, and welcome back to the channel. So there is a nice book I suggest reading, which is Effective Java by Joshua Bloch. This is a really amazing book. It contains a lot of heuristics and things about Java, right? One actual rule, it's called favor composition over inheritance. All right, so what do we mean by that? Let's pretend we have class A, and then I'm having the class B, okay? Let's say I want to extend this class A, right? In order to reuse some of the things, because inheritance is for reusability mainly. Okay, you would do A like following and start doing things, right? So this one should be like that. All right, now the real question you should ask yourself whether is really B is an A. It's an actual super type. It's not like if you need something from A, let's say you need a field a function, a variable, I don't know, then you are going to use the extent, okay? Because this is really a hard relationship between B and A. So what you can do instead, let's say you want to use something from A, it's not to use inheritance. Simply, you will delete that. You will create a private field of A internally, like that. And then you can use it to do all the things you need, okay? Let's take an example. There is an actual problem in the stack API in Java, right? So you can create a stack, right? This famous example. And let's pretend the stack of, for example, string, all right? So this stack comes from Java, of course. This is Java. Now, you know with the stack, I can put things into the Java or push, yes. So I can put A, for example, B and C, okay? So the latest element is C, nice. So what I can do right now, I can, for example, keep popping, which is, you can do Y, of course. So you can do stack if it is not empty, while it is not empty. I'm going to output with the stack like that. And do the okay. So if you run this example, this simple example, we should get C, B, and A. You can see that C, B, and A. That's awesome. This is actually the good behavior of A. Now, one problem with the stack API is the following I can do an insert at specific place, which is insert element add. For example, let's say I'm going to insert, for example, hello, and then I'm going to put it in the first position. Guess what? If I run the same example, it will be C, B, hello, and A. Okay, this is really a big flow of the stack API. Why is that? Simply because the stack is inheriting a vector. Okay, now why did Java developers in the beginning use this vector here to extend a vector? Because vector allow for many things. Okay, it's allow for adding elements. It's allow, I think, adding elements is in the vector. Exactly, it's allow for adding elements. Like a lot of the things we are going to reuse from the vector. Okay. Because the, like, the actual implementation, internal implementation is there. Why bother creating the implementation here? Let's extend the vector and do whatever we want. But this actually resolved in flow because we are exposing the vector stuff, internal implementation outside, so people can use it in order to do all sorts of things, okay? And this is really problematic. How you can implement that in a better way? Simply, you can create your simple class, for example, stack2, right? And instead of extending, what you are going to do, you are going to create a private val for example and then let's make it vector internally okay this is a simple vector i'm going to init it init it here once i'm initialization of course and here let's pretend i'm having a simple string vector of string not generics of course yes like the following and then for every function i'm going to create for example let's have function that is push for example and let's accept the string all right we are going to create two main functions right push and also the pop. The pop should return a string, right? Now in the push, let me see what how they are doing it. They are using add elements, right? Add elements from the vector. So we can do the same. Here in the push, we can do vector dot add element and string like follow. Awesome. And then we need to see the pop, how they are doing the pop. Okay, the pop is remove. Okay, here it is the peak. There is the peak function because they are removing. Thanks. Okay, we need to create the peak also. All right, let me just copy this one, the peak, and paste it here because I need it. Yes, convert it, please. Here the size, now we put everything as a string. Here the size comes from what? Come from the vector, the size. Pretty much it. And element comes from vector dot element at. That's everything you need. Same thing, let me just copy the pop code in here. 
Okay, I'm not doing anything special. I'm just reusing and show you how you can reuse this thing in order to do it. So vector dot size, and here for the peak, of course, that will be like that. And vector dot remove element that. That's basically it. Now you can expect the same thing if I use my stack to here. We we'll just delete that exactly here. You won't see this thing, right? Because you created and designed your API in a much better way. Okay, so it is much safe without any flaws. And this is the beauty. If there is flaws in the implementation of the super class, if you want to remove those flaws and not transfer them to actual subclass, you can use composition, of course. So we won't have any problems like that. Uh, okay, we missed the is empty. Uh, let's check is empty. Okay, is empty is implemented with the size. Okay, that's pretty much simple. Are using the size? We can create it like following. Yeah, it's a boolean. And return vector dot size is empty. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, nice, nice. Now we can run the same exact thing. This is actual my stack, and it could return the exact same output as you can see. So this is how you can convert and use our favorite composition over inheritance. Okay, even if you need stuff from the super class in some manner, don't extend it directly. Try to favor composition. See if you can work with this private field internally. That way you result in much, much better and robust design. And again, please read the book of Effective Java by Joshua Blosch because actually the example I copied it from also the, this book it is actually another problem. I think properties, the yeah, properties extend from hash table and it shouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly, it's extended from hash table. And you can see it's object object. Well, I think it's object object and it's not generic because this one is predating the generics. The creation of this class was before generics come to Java. Because, yeah, exactly, since Java 1.0. Like, this is really old. And, of course, since people are dependent on such class, you can just refactor it. Same thing with this uh, stack. Because you may say, well, why they didn't just fix this class? They can't do that because a lot of people are dependent on this implementation exactly. So it will be much harder. But actually, it's not also deprecated because while you can use the stack, and just be aware of the functions that are in the vector. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my productivity newsletter, which is the productive developer. Each week I share one productive tip to help you grow as a productive developer. Thank you very much and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.